in. The story begins in a rainy night when Vito Scaletta is sitting at his desk. He was born in Sicily in the year 1925. He was looking at old pictures. He was standing with his parents and his sister Francesca in front of their old house. He was remembering his old day and his time with the family. He did not remember much about that time except that it was a hard time for them until one day his father decides that it was time to move on. So they take a ship and start their journey away from Sicily across the ocean. They were moving towards America with new hopes and dreams of having a good life there. Vito remembers those days when he reached America with his family. He never saw such huge buildings in his life and these buildings were almost filling the sky. It was so beautiful and fascinating for him as a child. But soon this dream was over when he saw the miserable life there and how people treat each other. Now it's become a nightmare for him. Vito's father starts working for the man at the port who arranged their immigration here. This family tries hard to fit in the new society. They also send Vito to school so that he can learn English. This is the place where he meets with Joe Barbaro, and they become best friends in no time as they both are poor and did not find much work to do. So they decide to start their own business, the business in which police always chase them. One day when both were trying to steal from a shop, Vito was caught by the police. This is the year 1942. This year America was at war and they were looking for young guys who can speak English well. Vito was 18 at that time and he went into the army as they need men. He went to Sicily with other troops on Operation Husky. They were sent there because officials want to suppress the local resistance. They attack the locals who were leading the resistance, but during the fighting, Vito gets injured. However, he was lucky enough that in the meantime, army's tanks arrives to help their soldiers. Soon, many opponents' troops surrender in return they spare their lives. This seems to be over for Vito as he was in the hospital for a couple of months due to his injury. After his recovery, he decides to go back to America. As he reached back, he meets with his old best friend Joe who told him what was going around in his absence. On their way home, they also talk about winters and how cold it will be this year. Vito seems to be happy as he is back at least for a while as the war is not over a year, so he might need to get back to serving the army. But Joe told him that he knows some people who can help him so that he can leave the place and lives his life according to his wishes. After he finishes his talk with Joe, he goes back to his home where he meets with his mother and sister. They all are so proud of him as he is doing noble work. As taking a rest for a while, he tells his mother that he might not go back as Joe promises that he will take care of him. But his mother seems worried as she does not want that he will get into any trouble again. On his way, he sees a man indulging in fighting with his sister. Vito fights with him and knocks him down and asks her sister about the matter. Francesca told him that before their father died, he brought a lot of money, almost $2,000. Vito thought that by working at the port, he can never earn this much money, so he rushes to meet Joe so that he can help with something. When Vito saw Joe's place, he is astonished at how he manages to earn all this money in the last three years, but Joe told him that he only make this money in the last three months. So Joe takes him to Giuseppe Palminteri, who is a safecracker and can also provide forged documents to Vito. After taking his documents, they steal a car and got a license for it. Everything seems to be going perfectly for Vito. Joe takes him to Mickey, who can probably help him with money. They made an agreement and moves on. The next day, Vito went to meet with Derek Papalardo. He told him he is looking for a job as his dad used to work for him. Mr. Derek told him that he remember his father so he will help him. But they gave him labor work which he does not want to do as he want to make a lot of money. Vito when told that he works with Joe, cross check it and after they get confirmation about Vito they offered him work real work so that he can make money. Mr. Derek and Steve send him to take money back from a guy who owns them. They fight hard but ultimately he succeeded. Vito takes the money and gives it back to Mr. Derek and he appoints him as his assistant. After all this, Steve told him to meet Joe as he is waiting for him. As Vito reaches Joe, he told him that a man named Henry Tomasino wants to meet him. He might give them a big contract and from this, they can make a large amount of money. Henry demands some official stamps from the federal office and Vito never fails in his job. They hand over these to Mr. Henry who asks him to take these to a gas station before midnight otherwise they will be of no use. Although somehow managing this task brings more troubles for both Joe and Vito. As he gets out of all this, he meets with Mr. Luca Guirino who is already impressed with Vito's work. He asks Vito if he is ready for his next step like professional killing. Vito tells him that he was in the way so he has the guts to do it. But Mr. Luca warns him that this might be different from war. But they agreed on this and goes to Harry Marsden for the weapons they required. He showed them some amazing weapons, but Vito already know how to use them as he remained a part of Operation Husky. 
They collect the things they require and continue their mafia mission. After this reached the meet point where Henry joins them, they plan to kill Sidney Penn. However, as Henry approaches to kill him, he also shot him as a result Henry got injured. But Vito and Joe kill Sidney Penn on the spot with their advanced weapons. As their work is finished, they take Henry to El Greco, who is a doctor and provides medical aid to the Bay's Empire criminals. Henry owes his life to Vito, that's why he thanked him and handed him some money. Meanwhile, Joe asked him to leave and meet him at his place later on. Vito went straight to his home so that he can hand over his money to his sister. It will make them debt-free. However, this all goes not so well as Vito is caught by the federal agents. They took him to jail, but Vito never opens his mouth about the people he is working for. Vito alleges that he theft the national resources when this country required them most during the war. So the judiciary decides to sentence him to 10 years of jail. As he entered the jail, this seems to be a new world where they are supposed to behave well, but it was the total opposite here. As days pass, Vito gets involved with people here until one day Brian O'Neill and Vito ended up in a physical fight. But this attracts the attention of Leo Galanti who offers Vito his protection as he agrees to work for him. Vito passes through many pieces of training, but he always remains loyal to Leo. One day, Vito's sister, Francesca, shows up in jail to meet him. She told him that their mother is gravely sick. Vito asked her to go to Joe, as he owns money for him. By using this money, she can arrange for the best doctor in the city to treat their mother and the rest she can keep as a wedding gift, as there are no chances of his getting out at least for a while. But time flies. It's been four years since Vito is in jail, but Vito remains loyal to Leo. So Leo arranged his early release from jail. Now Vito is a free man once again. Vito goes to see Joe, who seems very happy to see him. Joe gives him clothes and a place to live. However, both of them decide that they will continue their work as mafia. So they went to a bar so that they can meet Alberto Clementi. Alberto appraises Vito as Leo appraises him because in jail he always stood up for Leo. He said he will give them work, but this time Vito is much more careful and becomes more professional in his work. It seems nobody can stop him. Because of this in no time, Vito becomes a well-known person in the underworld as everybody wants him. So one day Alberto Clementi takes him so that he can introduce him to someone very important. He meets with Carlo Falcone. He is a master of manipulation and also a central figure in the modernization of the Mafia in Empire Bay. Falcone sends him after Luca, who was in an abattoir. Vito attacked them, but Luca seems to be surprised that Vito now joined Falcone. However, Vito also completes this mission successfully as he never fails. Vito continues his journey toward success. He also starts working with Leo, his old jail friend. Now Vito is Mafia in himself. He passes through many dangers, but now he doesn't care about anything but fame, money, and respect. One day Vito goes out to Joe and Henry at a park. Henry tells him that he has done some research on Carlo's business and they find that Vito is the reason he is progressing so fast. So they want him with them so that they can make a deal with the one main supplier who supplies the whole city. Vito is astonished at how he gets the all information. But Henry convinces him that if Carlo can do it, they can also do it and by doing it alone, they will the whole money. Vito is not sure about this work, but Joe connives him and they move forward to meet Barano. When they reach his office, he is already busy doing something else. But when they offered him a deal, he asked why he'd do this deal with them. But Henry asks him to trust them as they have their trade secrets and they will return him a large amount of money. But before making a deal, Bruno tells him if he will not return his money, he will kill them all with his full power and there is no one and no place which can save them from his wrath. Finally, they got the money they required and by taking this they reached Mr. Wong. They both make a deal, but as these men get back to execute their plan, they are attacked and in this Henry died on the road. Vito and Joe soon get to know from Leo that Mr. Wong is involved in this attack, but according to him, Henry was the government informer. Their deal is over now, but Vito and Joe get a huge loss from this. After all this, Vito can find him in a room as things are only going worse. Carlo is behind this, so one day Leo asks Vito to get rid of Carlo before the feds reach him and use him for information about the mafia. So Vito reaches an observatory where Carlo is holding up. But the meeting did not end well as Vito kills Carlo and he does this for himself. Finally, as Vito leaves the shootout place, Leo meets Vito and asks for a celebration but it seems that Leo cannot afford to keep Joe alive and ultimately Vito loses Joe as well. Thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe for more great videos. We will see you in the next one.